And just as a reminder, we are recording these sessions so that you can view them later. Um, so I've gone ahead and hit record and we're going to go ahead and start. This is our sixth session. We're covering infusion and syringe pumps today. And again, this is intended for as a refresher for biomedical professionals in light of COVID-19. For those of you who are new, this is a Project Echo call and the foundation of all of our interactions are love and respect. Please respond kindly rather than react if you disagree. Um, please test your equipment ahead of time if you can. You can mute your microphone in the bottom left. I've gone ahead and muted everybody. Um, remember at the end when we open up for discussion to unmute yourself before speaking. Again, it's in the bottom left hand corner. Um, and you can introduce yourself as well so we know who you are and what hospital you're from. Um, speak clearly. If you're in a large room, stay close to your microphone. And if you have any issues at all, you can send a chat to us. You'll find that either in the bottom bar or on the right. Um, and you can also email us at assisthtm at assistinternational.org. Today we're going to hear a didactic from Guna. We'll also run through a preventive maintenance case study done by the Musoma team, led by Benedicto. And then at the end, we'll open things up for discussion. Just to quickly refresh what we've been talking about in the very first session on PPE and uh, disinfection, we talked about what's so dangerous about COVID-19, and that is that it's live on surfaces for up to three days, particularly plastic and stainless steel. Um, as you all know, that's what most hospital equipment and surfaces are made of, so this is something to be mindful. The way we keep ourselves and our hospitals clean is we use PPEs, all that should be single use where you can um, or disposable. We also wash our hands consistently because PPEs actually don't protect you from everything. And hand hygiene can um, protect you a little bit better. We also use high level disinfectants when we're um, cleaning equipment or surfaces or environments. And you can see a list on the right of some of the um, endorsed types. In summary, everyone should practice basic hygiene and social distancing. If you're in a hospital environment, you should increase the frequency of things like basic hygiene, use of personal protective equipment, and also equipment disinfection. Again, the virus can last up to three days on some surfaces, so be mindful and take care of yourself. We wanna point out a couple of resources. Um, the very first is one we've been mentioning week after week. It's the WHO Commodity Package. Um, it lists out all the different equipment and supplies that you need, and it also gives you specs. So as you're sourcing things, you know what to look for. Um, and I'll mention this one again. We've, I think, mentioned it a couple weeks in a row, but the Ventilator Training Alliance has, um, has brought together all the different brands of major ventilators, and you can see that list right there on the right. Um, and what they've done is put surface manuals, clinical user manuals, et cetera, all up on the internet so that if you need them, you have access to them. There's also an app you can download on your phone if you don't have a laptop. So today we're going to cover some fundamental backgrounds, things like main parts and functions. And we'll also talk about performing preventive maintenance on infusion and syringe pumps. And we'll talk a little bit about basic troubleshooting and corrective maintenance. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Guna to give us the didactic. Hi, good morning. So we're going to talk about type of infusion device. Uh, so generally you're going to see in, uh, shrink pump and volumetric pump, then a normal procedure using gravity control without using any control device or anything. So that's a type of device that you're going to see. So on the type of device, Gravity control is mostly low risk application. Simple control by using gravity flow and drop in per minute, all that. And uh, it solely depend on the gravity pressure for infusion. Then uh, they got accurate drop count, all that. Each drips has been, uh, you can monitor easily and uh, the volume accuracy depend on the conventional drop, then the time factor, all that. For infusion, it's active mood 
or method that uh, using infusion pressure included volu volumetric shrink, pneumatic uh, pump, all that. Deliver small, medium, high volume, and the flow rate, all that can be set accordingly, can be measured. They got an alarm and flow pressure sensor, all this included to monitor all this movement on the uh, flow rate, all that. And very accurate device, if properly used and maintained. Type of infusion, you're going to see shrink pump with a shrink and uh, the tube, tubing line, all that, and PCA pump is similar to shrink with the start stop switch all that volumetric with reserve reserve bag sensor drop drip chamber and volume pump itself and the line when you talk about uh, pca pump is normally used for uh, drug management for the patient itself uh, they use it when uh, they need it, they will use the uh, push button to send the drugs and uh, safely control dosage I are sent to the patient. Working principle. So we're going to cover in a peristaltic mechanism, uh, linear and rotary and string mechanism and operation. So we're going to cover on this particular topic, actually. On a prestatic uh, mechanism, there's a linear prestatic, uh, rotary prestatic mechanism. So these are very two common uh, type of mechanism that you're going to see in efficient device. When you talk about linear prestatic mechanism, Majority are used in volumetric infusion. Pump have drop sensor, occlusion pressure sensor, air sensor in the line. So the mechanism works such a way like uh, the finger that press the particular tube and uh, there's a movement of fluid by using a different angle of fingers. It's going to push the fluid through the tube. So if you see the inline and outline, that's how it works. With the finger is moving and pushing the fluid. On the rotary prostatic mechanism, there's a rot rotor that moving and uh, uh, pulling the fluid in into the tubing and. Uh, send out the fluid again. So it's used to drag the fluid in by using the tube line and go back out again. So that's how it, this particular mechanism work. And uh, you can see in uh, infusion uh, uh, volumetric device, at the same time, this particular device, similar idea used in uh, dialysis, all that. Shrink mechanism is basically using a shrink, uh, 60 ml, 20 ml, depends on the size of shrink they're going to use. And they're going to uh, set according to the size and that particular mechanism going to uh, move the screw with a, uh, with the motor that uh, using a stepper concept that going to push the shrink out and flow through the line to the patient. Depends on the size as well. And you can use multiple channel with more than extra one shrink pump and link together. Shrink pump parts, you can see the shrink self, plunger and the motor. The motor normally going to be a stepper motor and the gearbox and lead screw and the guide to, to carry 
and the, to push the plunger. This is how it works. So operation. When you talk about operation, you're going to see power on or switch and uh, string check selection according to the manufacturer specification. And you have to fill the IV fluid and uh, prime the unit and attach the string barrel and lock the shrink so it detect the shrink size as well and infusion setting almost the same you set the key key by setting the size of the infusion uh, limit all that and priming for the cannula and connect the patient to the IV, IV patient with the patient win all that and start the infusion. So when, once you set all that and start infusion. So when you talk about volumetric uh, pump block diagram, uh, this is particular block diagram that you're going to see in the volumetric unit pump itself. So you got infusion line, this way you, you go to the patient, infusion line, then drop sensor, display all this. I'm going to explain each block on the following uh, slides. So when you talk about alarm, you can see the alarm is linked to the control circuit itself. The alarm is basic thing that uh, you're going to see on most of the this particular device that monitoring occl occlusion, free flow, all this and uh, end of infusion, low battery, all these alarm are very important in a volumetric device to inform that's what's the status of the device itself. Control circuit is the major brain of this particular device that control everything from the stepper motor, from the keyboard, from the sensor, monitoring, everything is done by the control circuit. Display unit is showing the information and when you key in information, you're going to see on the display itself. Play important role to send you and to show you what's going on. And keyboard, keyboard where you key in the volumetric uh, detail and all the information that you want to key in like the size of the shrink and uh, what's the volumetric that you're going to de deliver. If infusion, you, you're going to deliver 100, you get milliliter, you're going to key in 100 milliliter. Information, all that. The infusion mechanism itself, you are talking about a component that allow for infusion pressure generate and responsible for fluid flow. It can be prostatic or rototype. And motor driving, stepper motor use active infusion me mechanism. Drop sensor and prostatic rotor pump is to monitor all the drop of your infuse and uh, electronic circuit that use uh, to check like a sensor to fit to check the dripping on the chamber all that. Air sensor in prostatic or rotor pump indicate the presence present of uh, air in the system and uh, a line for infusion mechanism. Occlusion pressure sensor is another sensor that control the pressure of infuse infusion and uh, it give uh, information to the control board and uh, the alarm all that if uh, beyond the particular occlusion is going to give alarm. Infusion line and accessories is one of the common thing like a, the, the drip box and the line itself. So this is our accessory part of it, disposable accessories. So you can see the disposable accessories, all that. 
air sensor in uh, prosthetic palm indicate the presence of air system all this and you can see the drip sensor itself all that so the drip sensor is to monitor the drip in the small chamber how many drips are in one minute all that to calculate the time for shrink pump this is a the block diagram for the shrink pump so this is uh, important for circuit that you're going to see on the shrink pump each block represent its own function but the control board is the key key component so when you talk about a uh, shrink pump block diagram you can see the detector circuit so to detect uh, like shrink sensor occlusion sensor plunger clutch detector and low power detector so this is one of the key component that you're going to see for all type of sensor and talk about shrink plunger clamp these are a move a drive shaft that um, for the motor itself when no when occlusion or anything this particular particular device are linked together and uh, you're going to get some alarm due to the occlusion. Shrink, shrink pump block diagram again. So we're going to talk about the other section of it. Uh, we're going to talk about shrink pressure and the mechanism itself. These are the key part of the shrink pump itself. So on the shrink pump, on the shrink pump uh, plunger, you can see the clamp, the plunger sensor and micro switch, the shrink is clamp on the sensor, it will show on condition and the information is sent to the CPU. If you see in detail, this particular control will recognize and check the required voltage and current and send the information to the CPU and will indicate on the alarm and the display of the uh, shrink pump itself. The control board is one of the important part of it that going to control all this uh, device at the same time going to take information from the sensors and going to indicate into the LCD display and going to give a buzzer alarm, indicate something wrong with the device. And the control motor itself will monitor the battery and all the information are, when you key in, is going to send to the control board and process and work according to that particular process. And moto, this is one of the important part of it. So uh, when you talk about the mechanism, this is the part of the mechanism that uh, move the particular stepper motor and the shrink mechanism itself. Power supply module, this is one of the main important thing. Without power supply, control board won't function and all the system not going to function. And battery is very important. You have to charge the battery, all that, to make sure the backup battery is there when the power failure. So this is one of the important thing that you need to do. If the battery is low, the signal will send to the control board and you're going to get alarm as well. And on the LCD display, it's going to show you a low battery alarm. 
LCD display and keypad. The front panel is one of the important thing, like going to give you all the information and the detail are key in on the keypad. And the pump unit to drive the stepper motor, all that. So that's a that's a detail that normally when you key in is going to send signal there. Application used to administrate IV fluid, string pump, regional anesthesia, anti arrhythmia medicine, chemotherapy agent, diabetic management, anti iprin. So all these are application that you use for strength and fusion. Common problem, when you talk about infusion, you got faulty drip sensor, battery fail due to lag charging, improper charging, damage pump, housing from dropping, and clinical user error. We can a palm housing. So when you talk about weaken, weakening the palm housing, do not use alcohol-based cleaning. Solution on the plastic house, it's going to change color and eventually going to uh, the, the particular pl plastic cover going to damage. String palm, slip of plunger may break the glass shrink and damage the palm housing from the dropping clinical user error, battery failure as usual, improper charging, weaken the palm housing, do not use the alcohol based cleaning solution on the plastic housing, use incorrect shrink size, cause incorrect volume and rate infusion. So these are the common problem you're going to see in this particular two device. How to avoid common clinical error? Very important when you're using a shrink pump, use the manufactured recommend, recommended shrink. Pay attention to whether the manufacturer give accurate in terms of uh, mechanical accuracy of the pump rather than the volume accuracy. Remove the clamp of the infusion set from the machine site before you attempt to clean, clear the blockage when occlusion occur. So you have to remove the shrink itself before you do the occlusion issues. Make sure clinical user know how to avoid using palm on the patient when the alarm is sounding. Not just move the alarm, but important need to know what's the uh, cause of the alarm and eliminate accordingly. Avoid reusing disposable string, dispose the string properly after use. Always monitor the system check, the volume remain in the shrink and replace 70 or 80% percent, percent full. Do not depend solely on the alarm feature of the system. So you need to monitor them even though you you always follow whether the alarm is there, but monitoring the, the device before the alarm and changing before it fully finish is one of the way of doing things. And patient may require continu continuous infusion or multiple drip. So depends type of the patient and clinical operator must label each pump and tube. Because sometimes you ended up going to use more than one string pump, so you need to label what type of uh, drugs are you using, all this. So you need to do that as a user. And power and battery. The battery always have to keep charge before and after and check the battery status regularly according to the manufacturer recommendation. Always install the battery when the pump is in use. Do not short the battery. If the battery damage or this or leak, replace immediately. Always check the battery because battery play as a backup. So anything goes wrong, uh, you need to make sure the battery is working. Like power failure, all that, you have to make sure the backup battery is always work. Preventive maintenance or shrink and infusion. Always we talk about 
preventive maintenance and uh, these are one of the main part that every time when you talk about any medical device you want to reduce a risk of in injury to the patient staff visitor all this these are one of the important thing that you want to do and to avoid unwanted uh, issues and life cycle all that and when you talk about preventive maintenance you're talking about qualitative tasks physical infection visible tests and cleaning electrical safety and performance verification tests these are key component that you always do during preventive maintenance test tool that you need during preventive maintenance you always you need multimeter electrical safety analyzer these are two part of a test tool that normally you need and for infusion analyzer uh, you must have a infusion analyzer self depends what brand you are using if you don't have infusion uh, analyzer you can use digital pressure meter or pressure gauge and mounting glass where it depends on the size you can go 100 ml or 250 or 300 ml depends uh, what type of infusion test you want to do cleaning for both infusion and shrink avoid moisture or contact with water and uh, excess humidity or temperature palm should keep clean and dry whenever not in use keep the palm away from x-ray ultrasound other electric electronic instrument clean all the accessories such as catheter patient remote switch and store properly but most of the accessories are single use so you normally going to dispose and replace them with a new one quality tests qualitative tests on uh, physical inspection you're going to check the casing mounting caster ac plugs line cord strain relief uh, cables both end of the line cord circuit breaker fuse uh, pulling according to the actual value of it cables and connector all this control switch and indicator and display verify whether it's working properly or not alarm verify is it properly working when you're doing all this testing airline alarm uh, all this you have to check when you open the infusion door whether is there's an alarm all that so this is what you do normally so this is a part that you check the alarm even during the P uh, verification you're going to still do the testing for the alarm all that and labeling all that electrical safety these are things that you're going to do daily routine when you do preventive maintenance you're going to check the particular three pin plugs all that these are one of the important thing you're going to check the cables broken are you using hospital grade cables all that and connect the equipment with the right power line all that so this is what you do when you talk about electrical safety tests there's class one device class two device uh, class one is using uh, it f word and class two is doubly insulated so the grounding pin should not exceed more than 0.3 ohm for class one and maximum leakage with the ground disconnect should be not exceed above 300 micro amp so these are electrical safety checklists that you're going to use. You're going to check the earth leakage resistant, current, enclosure leakage current, then the device voltage, device current, all this. These are one according to IC60601 or 62353, depends what standard you're going to use. When you talk about preventive maintenance, if you don't have infusion analyzer, you're going to do a flow rate and volume check by using this glass. 
So you need to have shrink and extension set. Always use a new set and graduate calibrate cylinder with volumetric capacity 25 to 100 ml. These are for shrink, but if you're doing infusion, you can go up to 300 ml and calibrate third stopwatch. All this. These are things that you need during uh, to check flow rate and volume check. And do not plunge and tip off the tube into the water too long. That can uh, affect the results as well. So when you talk about uh, testing, you have to mount the shrink on the uh, shrink pump itself and set according the set uh, parameter. Program the shrink pump for five milliliter per hour flow rate and volume instead of 20 milliamp. Then you start to carry out the measurement at the rate of five milliliter per hour. So you're going to see on the cylinder whether the reading is somewhere that particular range and see and calculate the time itself, how long uh, to complete the particular sequence. So when you talk about calculation, calculate the flow rating for, with the following form, formula, flow rate, milliliter, or hour, uh, final period volume, milliliter, and time of infusion. So time of infusion is where you keep your time and you divide by this milliliter or the volume on the buried glass and you, you get the flow rate milliliter per hour. And all the tolerance will be like 5% included the shrink uncertainty. So when you do occlusion pressure, you need to have shrink set Again, and three port valve, uh, valve connector and digital pressure meter by setting up particular shrink into 50 ml shrink with 20 or 30 ml district water inside the unit and launch the infusion at 5 milliliter rate for the pump. Please refer to the operation manual. Sometimes depends on the shrink or infusion. The, the operation manual will you need to need to understand because every every brand they have the way of operating, but the function is the same. So when you do the occlusion part of it, the reading should be within 200 to 800 mmHg range. This is the pressure range that you're going to see. And uh, setting up the occlusion connection should be something like this. Uh, and I did mention EUT and DUT. It's the same meaning. EUT is equipment under test and DUT is device under test. So for infusion, you're going to do something like this. Uh, you have to connect the infusion uh, uh, bottle to the device. From the device, you need to have the key connector and to the pressure analyzer and a digital pressure meter. So when any occlusion alarm on the infusion device or on the shrink pump, you're going to see the reading of the pressure on the digital pressure meter. And this is the setup for the shrink pump uh, for occlusion connection. So you need to have shrink connected and you set the particular thing and you see when you get occlusion alarm, you're going to see, see the occlusion pressure on the digital pressure meter. By using force gauge, this is another test method. In the force gauge will going to give you on the measurement KGF set occlusion level. So it, when there's an alarm on the string pump, you're going to see the reading as well. And this is the test 
checklist that you're going to use when you do a shrink pump this is the range all the tolerance are there most of it five percent and the limit of testing are there as well you got low medium eye tests included and kbo keep the vein open alarm testing all these are there when using with the infusion device you can be any brand depends uh, what type of setting you want to use but all the brand the function are the same so these are set up and this is particular uh, infusion palm analyzer you you need you can do flow you can do occlusion and you do can do the time according to the setup that you want to do and the method of uh, installation is something like this the setup diagram so if you're using a shrink that's the first setup method one if you're using a infusion or volumetric that's a method method two that you're going to use and you do the connection and you set your device into flow rate and it will calculate the flow rate of the particular device you don't need to have stopwatch because the calculation of the time all that done by the the infusion device itself analyzer itself that's the first method diagram and the second method of diagram is using a different brand so you need to have the IV pole all that set up and you're going to get monitored almost the similar way the checklist is for shrink pump is something similar and for the infusion the rate is a bit higher it can be 10 percent and 60 ml 120 ml per hour all that this is how you do it for infusion and these are internal part of the shrink pump troubleshooting and corrective action so these are internal part of the shrink pump you can see the power supply the stepper motor and the mechanism all that so when you talk about mechanism there's always a, a driver ro rotates thread metal and uh, it moves slowly for the shrink device Sink, shrink switch is used to monitor the shrink line switch so when the roto is attached and uh, when you put the shrink is going to detect what the size of the shrink all that common problem wrong shrink size and uh, wrong shrink type is very common and you got a lot of uh, battery and motor issue and no flow is one of the common occlusion is very common thing and pressure issue air line air in the line is another issue all these are type of common issue that you're going to see so on uh, infusion troubleshoot guide this is particularly a flow chart that we did attach together to do all the um, testing if you got any problem you can uh, use this particular flow chart like uh, when you begin you're going to see a issue on the device turn on or not and you troubleshoot the power supply if it doesn't turn on you troubleshoot the power supply and if you find out the power supply problem you have to repair the power supply if not check the battery if the battery need to replace you replace the battery and try to turn on again if the device on try to run the device by using ac and see whether the battery is charging or not so this is how you do it by using this particular checklist case study we're going to talk about some common issues that you're going to see we talk about damage mechanical part door latch and shrink lock battery failure fire spark 
all these damaged pump casing, housing, alarm error, broken component like splinter, and software defect, and in inadequate user interface design, human factor issue. So damaged pump, yeah, these are like when you drop the pump and uh, during the drop, then you damage the particular device and the results is over infused or under infused depends on the on the problem sometimes you're going to get this either one of this problem and uh, you're going to crack the casing itself and damage the waterproofing uh, design and when you op open the device you're going to see a misaligned mechanism and pump plunger broken all that during to misalign uh, the mechanism you're going to get stress on the string pump all that and that ended up not going to deliver a proper output so the solution for misalign you adjust back the string mechanism and replace the damaged part if any broken part and uh, for water, replace the seal or the casing, or uh, if you don't get the casing, maybe you can uh, use a waterproof bacteria, uh, bacteria uh, proof type of silicon for, for cover up the leakage point so you don't get any bacteria issue in future. Another issue of with setting is uh, you got wrong sizing of uh, shrink, wrong brand of shrink. Always use many. Make sure that you always use the recommended uh, type of shrink by the manufacturer. And reusing the same shrink on the new patient that's the wrong thing. Incorrect setting such as volume setting all this. These are common thing that you're going to get. So solution for the shrink, make sure that you always use uh, what manufacturer recommended. And wrong sizing, using uh, wrong sizing of shrink and volume setting all this, make sure that train the clinical user to check the setting between the patient and never reuse the shrink again. So these are the part that you need to do as a biomedical engineer or technician, you need to give awareness to the user. So when you talk about broken splinter, you can see there's a broken piece of uh, engaging between the driver and the tube nuts and uh, driver splinter have moved due to this particular plastic uh, is broken. And uh, this can uh, happen due to the drop damage because the user wrongly dropped the device and uh, break that particular thing and the splinter move. And this cause of uh, maybe the device not working properly and uh, overdrive. It depends on the condition sometimes. So maintain according to the manufacturer recommendation typically every six months and train the clinical user how to handle with care. This is things that you need to do. So when you talk about broken splinter, you can see A is the actual one, undamaged, and you can see the B photo, the damaged one, you can see the broken line and uh, splinter and uh, driving splinter and uh, broken uh, tube driving splinter is not connected together and not holding together so there's no movement of the splinter anymore battery another common failure in uh, infusion device so make sure that always check the battery and you see any crack or casing melting all this due to the battery sometimes the battery has spent you're going to crack the particular internal part of the pump. And uh, sometimes you don't, if the patient 
it's moving, you're going to un they're going to unplug the power and you're going to the washroom and come back. If they forget to put the particular power line again, it's ended up maybe it doesn't give alarm, it shut down itself. Sometimes the alarm may be very low. Because of that, the nurse, the user, don't really realize that's alarm. So this type of thing, you need to look into it actually. Normally the solution is check the battery every six months and replace if needed. Maximum lifespan is about two years. Depends how they use it. Make sure the volume is loud enough to alert the clinical user. So make sure the clinical user monitor the particular device. Right. Okay, thank you, Gerna. Welcome. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Uh, so at this point, we want to do two things. First and foremost, we're opening up discussion. So you can start messaging us in the chat, um, or you can also feel free to raise a hand or just unmute your microphone. Um, I'm also going to launch a poll. Um, similar to the one we've been running the past couple of weeks, but we're starting to come to the end of our equipment list. Um, and so moving forward, we're going to revisit some of our more, um, I shouldn't say popular, but our more uh, necessary topics. So for example, next week is ventilators. Um, we'll go through some of the Q&A that we had in the very first ventilator session. So specifically talking about um, corrective maintenance issues that a lot of people face um, and some other things. But in the meantime, if you could fill out the poll, that'll help us guide some future sessions on infusion and syringe, or maybe other topics. Um, you can also feel free to give us feedback at our email. Um, that's assisthtm at assistinternational.org. I'll put it in the chat for you. Um, and you can feel free to communicate any way that is convenient. And while we're waiting for some questions, Guna, do you remember any of the main questions that came up from the East Africa session, perhaps we could start sharing some of those details. We didn't get much from uh, Africa. Yeah. But I think uh, Calmet can ask some question because they use a lot of infusion device. Yeah, but a uh, very common problem that we find in uh, Africa is due to the battery issues. So that's uh, one of the common problems we see. And we have just a few minutes left, so I'll, I'll kind of leave things a bit quiet. 